something called microbial mat. And microbial mat uh, is formed when all of the life that's in the body of water, whether it's plant life or animal life, doesn't matter. When it dies, it falls down to the bottom. Now, what we're seeing out here is now sandstone, but it started out as that microbial mat, that plant and animal life. And as a result, we find lots and lots of marine fossils in this rock. And I'll talk a little bit more about what kind of fossils we find um, after we leave our main track site. And our last clue that we used to be underwater are these ripples, which indicate a beach environment as that sea wave was uh, receding and drying up. And there's several patches of really nice ripple marks as we go up the eastern side. And here we are at our main track site. And this is the first place we get to get off the bus. Oh, yeah, Derek just got hot right in that second. <laughs> Where are y'all visiting from? Denver. Denver! <laughs> yeah. All right. Does everybody remember that, uh, that big brown dinosaur we saw? The uh, iguanodon? toed prints um, that are all over. Most reptiles, you know, are terrible parents, right? Mama lays the eggs, walks away, and that's the last you ever see. Um, but these smaller prints tell, tell us that, in fact, they did cake. They believe that this was um, a family herd of prints. And we think that they were making a seasonal migration from Boulder, Colorado, down into now, a second dinosaur that was here that left this footprint, left this footprint that's right up here. And you can tell it looks just exactly like a modern day bird, right? That was made by this dinosaur. I decided I was just going to 
find out on my own. So I did a little independent study and uh, asked the questions, stored the data, you know, made made uh, had a hypothesis, and ultimately, I'm not completely done yet. But I think that it's because um, orange orange lichen tends more highly to come uh, from the urine of the animals of the wildlife. And what's interesting is that the wildlife also used the lichen as a plant source, or as a food source, so just fascinating. I never, I did not know I was going to turn into a lichen nerd when I grew up, but, <laughs> so there you go, you just never know what's going to happen, right? So when we ran, went around that bend, we left the Cretaceous period, and now we're looking at uh, layers of sediment, and we'll be seeing fossils that were formed during the late Jurassic period so about 150 million years ago. And during that time, again, Colorado was flat. Um, the climate was very hot, um, but our dinosaurs had a source of fresh water. And their source of fresh water was a shallow riverbed with lots of braided streams on either side. And we can see evidence of that riverbed in the mountain. It's this reddish purplish stripe that you can see going up. And then when we get down here, if you drop your eyes down, you'll see where it picks up again. And you can follow that, that riverbed all through the hillside. And just like on the other side with that muddy beach, it's because of the wet, muddy environment that we have the fossils here at Stops 2 and 3 that we're um, going to be looking at. So let's all hear it for water. <laughs> This was all flat, and this is my footprint. Okay, we actually have four of them. Okay, here's one. Can you help me find some? Oh, be careful, look. Two. This always gets stuck in there. Three. Four. Now, we think these are made by a stegosaurus, and we also think that it was following a larger animal for protection. And the dinosaur, if you'll come with me, that we think he was following. Was one of these long necked, long tailed sauropods called the Apatosaurus um, dinosaurs that are much, much bigger. But in 1877, he was king of the hill. His footprint is right here. So if you look up here, you can see where he first stepped in. His foot goes all the way down to the bottom. You can see this, do you see this curve? This is the mud curving around his foot. It gets crushed by his weight, and then it curves back up the other side. What would have been the orientation of the ground at that time? Flat. Like so, look, it. so this is all flat. Yeah. Um, and we have a little illustration over here that will help you visualize it. But this is his right rear foot. His left rear foot is right here. Oh, yeah, because it's like just right out there, right? Yeah. So, what it was out of the dinosaur's body? I'm asking you if you know. You told me you saw it too. Okay. What body part the bones are? And we don't know what species of dinosaur they came from. To know that, we would have to dig them out. And we do not dig out a dinosaur ridge anymore and have it for a very, very long time. Do I think? There's some red around. Uh huh. It turns out that the bones that are red, bones, by the way, can be pretty much any color, but our bones are red because these bones all sat in water that had a high iron content. Oh, like okay. So right here, there is a short curved bone. We believe that that is from a rib bone from a stegosaurus. Okay? And then this big one that starts way up here, see sort of a lump, goes all the way across. And it even comes out here at the end. We believe that that is a years ago. 
Uh, the bone, or it's the bone. This, the rock that was in front of us, the big boulder. Maybe they broke off. They did. They kind of split in half, didn't they? And like there's. So over here we've got more bone. This is probably a uh, limb bone, but again, we don't know which limb or which dinosaur. And then you can see all kinds of bone in this rock, all of that tan color bone. The, these bones sat in water that had a higher crystal silicon, which is like So, guess what? What? Uh, what's your first name? Thousands of bones still in this ridge, waiting for us to 